5.12, we're finally going to talk about optimistic things and solutions. And we're going to talk about sustainability. Sustainability is our ability to keep basically life as it is for future generations. Maintain uh, the availability of resources, the space, of land, of water, of everything that we need to survive making sure that they're still there for future generations. When we're trying to figure out how sustainable we are as a society and as a globe, we look at things like biological biodiversity. Is there a lot of it or no? How much food are we producing? How we also look at climate change indicators like average global surface temperature, carbon dioxide concentrations, we look at how the human population is growing and at what rate. And we also look at resource depletion. So how much of that resource is still available. Sustainability looks like things such as using our energy and water efficiently. So that can mean using water efficient products like your toilets, showers, dishwashers. Toilets, by the way, is the number one use of domestic water. Good to know. Gray water um, can also be used. So what gray water is, is basically recycled water, but not like gross water. Just, you know, kind of, I wouldn't drink this, but it's not bad. So water that was used for laundry or showering or uh, like from your dishwasher or something. So it's, again, you don't want to drink it, but it's still usable. Like a plant could still use it just fine. Um, using appliances that have a little energy star on them, using LED bulbs, being just mindful, use more mindfully using your power. You know, if you're not using a light switch, turn it off, you know, and those little things add up. Uh, so this is just showing you a picture of like how the gray water system works. So basically all your, your water that's like still okay goes to a holding tank where it can then be um, be used for irrigation, um, flush toilets, wash or washing machine, car wash, um, things that you know you don't really necessarily need perfectly pristine clean water. Um, but then if it gets to a point where it's too too much, then it goes on the sewer. Again, this isn't all on or all all stuff. Just you know, not that, not the bad water. Also looks like reducing and reusing, recycling, using less plastic packaging. So for instance, you know, we're something offline and comes in like 20,000 pieces of plastic and then one tiny little thing, you know, less of that. Using or reusing things like straws and bags and cups and dishes, finding things that are more sturdy that can last many times and we don't have to use single-use products. Um, it can also be an economic incentive like tax breaks to big companies in order to encourage them to use less packaging, encourage them to recycle their stuff, encourage them to reduce you know, what they're making and reusing what, what they've already made. Looks like decreasing food waste and composting, buying fair trade and local to decrease the amount of um, like miles that your food has to travel. And along with the food waste, um, food waste, when it goes to the landfill, the anaerobic decomposition of that food waste creates methane, and methane is a very powerful greenhouse gas. So it's not good. Um, we want to decrease the amount of food waste that we're producing, being more mindful of you know what we're buying so that we don't end up with all this nasty, gross, rotting food. Um, and composting is great because you know you get rid of your your scraps and then you have awesome stuff to add to your plants and then happy happy little plants and happy you it's great also means using less fossil fuels transitioning to renewable energy when possible or alternative fuels like biofuel having more public transport it can be urban farming and green roofs so that, so urban farming <clears throat> allows cities to make more of their own food so they don't have to ship in food. <coughs> Green roofs provide 
more vegetation for the city so we don't have as much of that urban heating effect. Xeriscaping uh, is a way of gardening and landscaping so that water can be conserved. So using things like um, oh, and using things like cacti and other plants that don't require a lot, using more rocks and th that kind of feature, as opposed to trying to create this artificial landscape that doesn't do well in that environment. So you have to constantly be adding fertilizer and irrigation and all this stuff just to make it look pretty. And then you could just also be using what grows naturally. That's also part of xeriscaping. So this is a green roof. Again, it makes the city cooler. It also is a, a source of, um, or provides a source of like of a carbon sink. So like these plants can be taking in carbon that the city is producing. And again, this is a urban farm. Okay. Moving on to sustainable yield. So sustainable yield is the amount of renewable resource that can be taken without reducing the available supply. It's typically um, 50% of the carrying capacity, uh, and also being sure to catch the fish that are past reproductive age. So they've had the chance to reproduce, they've had the chance to grow, um, So that because if you're constantly catching the juvenile fish, that means they haven't had the chance to reproduce, and so you're going to continue on decreasing your stock. But just not, like, I give the example of fish because we've talked about overfishing, but it's maximum sustainable yield applies to anything that you, you harvest. That might be trees or another type of animal that you hunt. I don't know, I'm not really super, like, informed about hunting stuff. Um, so again, maximum sustainable yield is that that perfect level where we catch enough fish that we, you know, we have what we need while still leaving enough fish where they can reproduce and maintain that stock. Whew, okay, that was a lot. We're going to go into more detail on some of those things with some other videos. But for right now, I'll just explain the concept of sustainability.